Good evening. Creep. First, there's Hutter Galloway opening the doors with a mystery play. And speaking of doors, tonight we're visiting the inner sanctum, so open that door, Mr. Holt. Good evening, friends of the inner sanctum. This is your host opening the squeaking door for another session of the AGGMS. The Association of Ghouls, Ghosts, and Midnight Spirits. Oh, may I see your membership card as you enter, please? But, uh, oh, no, no, it's not a printed card. All you have to do is show me your wrist. If there's any blood pulsing in your arteries, then you don't belong here tonight. Better come back and try some other time. After you've passed your mortuary test. <laughs> And now for tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery. It's an original radio play by Emil Tepperman called Make Ready My Grave. And stars two radio favorites, John Banks and Richard Woodmark. It's about a boy and a girl who've just been married. A piece of colored string, an open grave, and a hangman's knife. That train is the Southeast Limited. See it? Long, sleek, and powerful. Taking off the miles on the humming rails. A masterpiece, 20th century mechanical perfection. Nothing about it to suggest lurking hate, or fear, or superstition, or death. But let's take a look into compartment A, car 17. John and Betty Loomis, just married, are going for their honeymoon to John's ancestral estate. John, I'm so happy. <laughs> How soon do we get to Loomis, though? In about an hour, Betty. Just think, I married into one of the oldest families in the state. I hope you'll be very happy, darling. <laughs> oh, I will, I will. You do love me, don't you, John? Of course I do, baby. I'll always love you. Always. No matter what happens. What do you mean, no matter what happens? What could happen? Sam, something's wrong with you. No, no, it's nothing at all. You're hiding something. There's something you haven't told me. It's nothing, Betty. It's nothing to worry about. You don't want to tell me? No, not now. Maybe later. Why are you playing with that piece of yellow string? What? You've been playing with it ever since we came onto the train. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I... I never noticed. I watched you. You've been telling me nothing. A knot. Good Lord. I must have tied it without knowing what I was doing. You've, you've tied it into a noose. A hangman's noose. I don't know how I came to make it or how I picked it up. Well, it, it's only a piece of string. Yes, it's only a piece of string. Betty. What is it, John? Here, take this. A gun? Take it. But why? If, if I should ever try to... If I should ever try to strangle you... John. Please listen to me. If I should ever try to strangle you, promise me to use that gun on me. What are you talking about? Lomasville, next stop. Oh, this... Next stop, Lomasville. This is where we get... John, what's this all about? That piece of yellow string and, and now this gun. Put it away, Betty, and remember what I said. Don't ever forget it. Here. This is just a way station. The train only stops here to let us off. Otherwise, it goes right through. Mm -hmm. I thought Louisville was a big town. Well, it used to be a hundred years ago, but now there's only the Loomis estate. Uh, are we far from the estate? About two miles. Old Herman Galt should be here to pick us up in the station wagon. Herman Galt? Mm -hmm. He's the handyman. There's been a Galt working for the Loomis family for the last hundred and fifty years. John, I don't like it here. Dark, 
Well, I don't know who can God be. I wrote them what train we were taking. I'm right here, Mr. John. Oh, God, you frightened my wife. I'm sorry, ma'am, if I scared you. Oh, that's, that's all right. It, it was just the way you spoke so suddenly out of the darkness. If you'll follow me, I've got the station wagon back here. John, he doesn't like me. God, no, that's just his way. He's very devoted to the family. Where do you get to know him? I don't think I care to. Johnny, he's driving too fast. It's so dark. Don't worry, Betty. Dalton knows this road like the back of his hand. He'll be there in a few minutes. I'm frightened. Johnny, please, tell me why you gave me the gun. No, I, I can't tell you now, Betty. Maybe after you meet Uncle Edward. John. What? What's that in your hand? What? What? Another piece of string. A red one this time. What? I, I, I must have picked it up in here, off the seat. You've knotted it into another hangman's noose. Dad. Yes, Mr. John. This piece of red string, did you put it here? No, sir. Then how did it get here? You ought to know. Yes. Yes, I, I don't know. But, God, why are you stopping here? We're home, ma'am. This is the entrance to the Loomis estate. I've got to get out and open the gate. I'll be right back. Betty, I've, I've got to get out, too. I've got to see for myself. See what? You stay here, Betty. Stay right where you are. Wait a minute. I'm coming, get too. Back, Betty, get back in the car. Mr. John is right, ma'am. You shouldn't go with him. Take care of her, Dalton. I won't be left. Dalton, where's he going? That is the Loomis family cemetery. Cemetery? What does he want to see him there in the middle of the night? He'll tell you himself, ma'am. In due time. No, I'm going to find out right now. Better not, ma'am. Better come. John! Back. John, wait for me! Betty, I told you to I'm going with you. I want to know what there is in that cemetery. Get back in that car. I'm your wife now. I have a right to know what this is all about. I'm going with you. All right, that's the way you feel about it. But hold on to that gun I gave you. Keep it in your hand all the time. John, why? You'll find out soon enough. This is the gate of the family cemetery. All the Loomis's and their wives are buried here. It's so shadowy. Why tombstones look like ghosts? Hold my hand, John. No. Just hold on to that gun. John. Who's going to this with a high tombstone? My great grandfather's. Stuart Loomis. He found it in Loomis' estate. This is my grandfather's grave. His wife. Where's my father? My mother. And, and that's all. That should be all. Come over here. This is what I came to see. This is what I've been afraid of. John. John, it's an open grave. Freshly dug. Yes, ma'am. It was just dug tonight. Who was it for? That old darling. I'm afraid it's for you. And now let's hurry back to our date in the graveyard. Remember? With poor Betty, whose husband has just told her he's afraid the freshly dug grave is for her. John, what do you mean? Who dug this grave for me? Who? <laughs> if I told you, you'd think I was crazy. No, you've got to tell me. If I'm in danger, I have a right to know. Was it God? Your Uncle Everard? No. No, at least I don't think so. His wife, Christine. Betty, do you believe that a ghost could dig a grave? Well, I'm from a ghost. Oh, I told you you'd think I was crazy. John, what? Why are you looking at me like that? I don't know. 
Dann geht das auf deinem Weg. Nein. Alle sind klar. Das ist gut, ich kann nicht mehr gehen. Das ist gut. Station wagon still waiting at the gate, but I didn't see golf. Maybe he went up to the house. Golf, where are you? Hello there, Jeff. What's up? Uncle Everard. What happened to golf? He came up to the house. He'd gone into the cemetery. I thought I'd better come down. Oh. Is, is it there? Yes, it's there. A freshly dug grave. Oh. Uncle Everard, this is my wife, Betty. How are you, Betty? Hello. You saw the grave too, Betty? Yes, and, and John says he thinks it's for me. I, I'm afraid I don't understand. You this. haven't told her anything yet, John? Well, just just a, a little. I, I couldn't bring myself to. I think it's time you did. More tea, Betty? Thank you, Uncle Edward. I will have a little more. You, John? No, thanks. It's too bad Christina's ill. She's upstairs in our room. But I hope she'll be better by tomorrow. You can see her then. Maybe. What do you mean? That grave out there. Maybe it'll be filled tomorrow. John, don't you think it's time you kept your promise to tell me what this is all about? You tell her, Uncle Everett. Well, Betty... There's a ghost in the Loomis family. That's it in a nutshell. Oh, I see. And it was a ghost who dug that grave. I know it sounds mad. After 150 years, we Loomis have come to the conviction that it can't be anything but a ghost. 150 years? Mm. John's great-grandfather, Stuart Loomis, settled this strip of seacoast under a patent from the colonial governor. There's his picture over the fireplace. Wait. He doesn't look much like you, John. Stuart Loomis was a hard man. There was a French privateer in these waters who made a lot of trouble in those days. Gaston de Roux, who sailed the seas with his wife, Antoinette. But what has a French pirate and his wife to do with that grave? Stuart Loomis captured de Roux and his wife. And under the authority conferred upon him by the governor, had the power to hang them. You mean the women, too? Yes. He hanged them both. On a gibbet where our family cemetery now stands. Oh, how terrible. Before he died, Gaston de Rue laid a curse on the Loomis family. He swore that just as his wife was hanged, so would all the Loomis women die. He swore that he would come back and dig a grave for the wife of a Loomis in every generation and furnish the noose by which a Loomis... Spangle his own wife. But, but that's incredible. Short while afterward, a fresh grave was found beside the gibbet where LaRue had been hung. That night, Stuart Loomis's wife, John's great grandmother, was found hanging by the neck from the eaves of this very house. And Stuart Loomis? I told you Stuart Loomis was a hard man and had made many enemies. There were many who hated him deeply and bitterly. He was arrested and tried for the murder of his wife. Convicted and executed. Now you know the secret of the Loomis family. But, John, that, that still doesn't prove there's a ghost. No, that one incident doesn't prove it. But it happened again when the next Loomis married. John's grandfather. And to the next Loomis, John's father. Sometimes a year after he married, sometimes five years. The curse never fails. It's happened in every generation? Yes. And now, John Loomis has brought a new wife home. And there's a freshly dug grave waiting in the family cemetery. And, and I'm next. Hmm? I don't know, Betty. Maybe that grave isn't for you. What? Maybe it's for Christine. For my wife. This, this is all ridiculous. 
a ghost couldn't think of grave. Make John strangle me to death. Uncle Everard, you, you can't believe such a legend. It can't be true. Maybe not, my dear. But the graves of the strangled Loomis women are out there to prove it. Well, this is your room, Betty. I'd of course call you at 8 tomorrow morning. Good night. Good night, Uncle Everett. Good night, John. Good night, Uncle Everett. This is such a big room. It's so gloomy. The whole house is like that. It lies gloomy and sullen under the Loomis curse. Oh, Betty, I love you so much. We'll beat the curse together. Let me go, darling. I want to change my clothes and wash. All right. There's that bathroom over there. I'll only be a minute. All right, darling. Oh, it's a lovely bath. <laughs> Betty, what is... John, quick. What? Look. Hanging from the shower bar. What? A penguin's noose. It's a real one this time. A rope. Where is it? Hang someone. Put it there. It's the Loomis curse. We can't get away from it. No ghost could have hung that rope there. Let, let, let's call Uncle Everett. All right. Have you got the gun with you? No, it's in my handbag. Get it. But get it, I say. All right, John. Here. Here, I've got it. All right, now keep it with you all the time. And don't be afraid to use it on me if necessary. All right, let's get your uncle. This is his room. I wonder if I ought to wake him. It might upset Aunt Christine. She said. We've got to wake him. Better knock harder. Well, it wasn't locked. Call him. Uncle Everard. Uncle Everard. It doesn't answer. But there's a light in the room. Push the door further open. All right. Well, there's nobody in the room. The bed's empty. Uncle Everard. Hey, Christine. Maybe in the bathroom. The door is open. Hey, hey. Don't open it. Hey, Christine. She's hanging by the neck. She... She's dead. The same kind of a noose is in her bathroom. Uncle Everard hanged her. It's the Loomis curse catching up with us. No gold, any trace of Uncle Everard? I searched the whole house, basement to attic, not a sign of him. He must have gone out, come along. But it's raining. We've got to find him, Betty, come on. The dog out here, how will we ever find you? I have a flashlight, ma'am. You look. What? Fresh footprints in the slush. Oh, they must be Uncle Everard's. They lead down toward the cemetery. Come along, Gold. Mr. John, you can see for yourself the footprints lead right to this new grave. Why did he come here? There's the answer, Daddy. A cross at the head of the empty grave. Throw the flashlight on it, Carl. There's something written on it. It says, Christine Lou. Daddy, ah! what is it? Look. Over there. Another grave. He's dug another one. There's a cross on this one, too. To the same thing? Yes. Yes, it does. It says, Betty Loomis. John, sit close to me. That portrait of Stuart Loomis over the fireplace looks so real. It's right. <laughs> now, remember, Betty, whatever happens, hold on to that gun and don't be afraid to use it tonight. Where's Gold? He ought to be here soon. He went to look for some weapons. Here I am. <gasps> what, John? God, you always frighten me coming in so quietly. I'm sorry, ma'am. Here, Mr. John. These ought to be pretty good weapons. Size? If I had them sharpened only the other day, they could slice a man's head off in one stroke. Take one, Mr. John. Thanks. But I'd hate to use it on Uncle Everard. If he shows up tonight, you'd better use it. 
Maybe he's come back into the house through the back way. I'll go through the house again if you'd like. This time I'll start with the attic. Be careful, Bill. I will. John, I don't like him. Bill? And I don't think he likes me either. Yes, that's right. Who is that? Must be Gaunt in the attic. Help, Mrs. Gaunt! Listen, man, Uncle Everard hiding up there. Stay right here, Betty, and hold on to that gun. John, be careful. Don't worry, just stay careful. John, oh. come back. I'm frightened. I'm afraid to be alone. There's nothing to be afraid of. I have this gun. And if anybody comes, I... Well, I... Well, I sweat out. There. Who's in this room? Don't come any closer. I have a gun and I'll shoot. I can't see you, but I'll shoot at the sound. John, help! Help! Around my neck. Let go of my shoes. It's not loaded. I took the bullets out when you left it in the car. Gold? Yes, ma'am, it's gold. Mr. John is busy up there in the attic with the body of Mr. Everard. I killed him, too. And when Mr. John comes downstairs, he'll find you. And I'll cut him down in the dark with my scythe. Why? Why? There were others besides the pirate LaRue who hated Stuart Loomis. Like my own great-grandfather, he was in the service of Stuart Loomis, and he hated him. When LaRue laid the curse on the Loomises, my great-grandfather decided to make it come true. It was he who strangled the wife of Stuart Loomis. And through the years, the gods from father to son have handed down their hate. <laughs> Maybe. I'll tighten the noose and finish you. Where are you? Why is it dark in here? Betty! John, look out, it's dark. He has a fire. And so will I. John! John! Oh! honeymoon for Betty. But you know, there's a lesson in her story for forgetful wives. If you keep tying little colored strings to your fingers to remind you of things and you still can't remember them, why not try a rope neatly tied around your neck? It's sure to help you forget. Thank you, Mr. Hope, for a very enjoyable performance in our mystery theater. Hope has had a gallery reminding you to sleep tight. Good night. This is the Armed Forces Radio Series.